What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Aiden here and I am editing the interview that you're about to watch with Jamie Babbitt. And if you didn't know, I identified as a lesbian for seven years before figuring out that I was transgender. And so in the late 90s, early 2000s, I clung to lesbian movies, which there were not many, but one of them that was just really quirky and definitely sticks out in my mind as one that I'll always remember is But I'm a Cheerleader. They're having the director's cut coming out and I want you to go watch the movie. I want you to go get the director's cut, check it out, um, watch this interview. I really love But I'm a Cheerleader. I think it will feed your queer soul if you have, if you're a lesbian, if you have ever identified as lesbian, even if you just appreciate queer movies, this is a light 90s cult classic in the queer, especially the lesbian community. So go ahead and enjoy this interview I did with Jamie Babbitt. Peace. Oh, my name's Aiden. It's nice to Hi, meet you. Thanks for having me on. Happy to be here. Very happy. I thought maybe a little history. So I'm a transgender man. I am 33 years old and I lived as a lesbian from 16 to 22 years old. I mean, we can maybe argue before that, but I was aware <laughs> that I was a lesbian. Um, and this movie, But I'm a Cheerleader, was, I, I graduated in 2005. So I was in middle school in 1999 when this movie came out. It was one of like three <laughs> that had like a lesbian story and I didn't even get half of the jokes um, as I do now. Now I watch it and I laugh more. So I just wanna thank you for like being a part of that. Um, just in general, I think anytime we go out there, like put a risk out there, um, you know, it doesn't mean that it's gonna do well. Right. Yeah. So uh, I'm really excited and happy and just, I don't know, I felt like maybe, maybe putting that out there ahead of time. So you're not just like, who's this dude, you know, this, this movie had resonance for me. And so I just appreciate you and everybody who was a part of it. Yay. I'm so excited. I actually got like a list of people that wanted to do press stuff for this release and I only picked queer people. So yeah. That's awesome. That's I was like, I don't care about entertainment tonight, but I just want to talk to all the queer people. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, that's awesome. I love to hear that. So, you know, 1999 is when it came out. 2020, you know, we're here. Like, what is, what's the difference? How does it, how does it feel? I mean, it was really, well, first I was similar. I wasn't in junior high when the movie came out, but I wasn't that much older. So I was in my 20s and... I think there was like a boldness to the movie because I was so young and I was so determined to see queer characters on screen that I had was living every day. Um, and I was really influenced by the Riot Girl movement at the time. Um, and I loved their audacity to just like pick up instruments and start playing music and they didn't care if like Geffen Records gave a shit at what they were doing. So I felt very emboldened by their attitude. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make a movie about all the people I are in my world. And it wasn't like an older gay generation. It was definitely like the younger queer generation. Um, and I think also the community in 99, they were still in the middle of the AIDS epidemic. And it was this horrible plague that everyone's friends were dying and it was really brutal. And so I don't think there was a lot of comedies being made. And um, I've always been like a wry comedy person and liked, I mean, obviously John Waters was always doing his thing. Um, but yeah, so I think that was part of it too. Like I, there were lesbian movies at the time, but it was like, they were all pretty serious and I just felt like I couldn't relate to them. So serious. Like I remember one, like, like the girl like kills herself and I'm just like, this is my life. Like I'm going to like, I'm going to fall in love with this straight girl and then I'm just going to not, you know what I mean? So I appreciate the comedy in it. It's such, and honestly, it's kind of a heavy topic, right? Cause we're talking about this girl being sent to a conversion camp um, to some extent. Uh, 
and yet you seem to make it fun. You seem to almost, it's like, you're almost like, you know, you don't want to go, but you're like, oh, you know, like that, like just the camaraderie and just that, you know, that space, especially then in 1999, like as a young queer kid, I mean, even the mug was queer, like being called queer even then in 1999 wasn't, it was an insult. It wasn't something that is thrown around so easily today. Um, and yeah. so like, I love the audacity you had when you were younger to push the envelope. Um, yeah, and I, I think also for me at the time, it's funny, the whole gender conversation in the queer community wasn't really talked about either. And I felt, I'm from Ohio, I grew up very much a girly girl and I was always terrible at sports and like people, all the like, lesbian softball players and stuff picked on me because I was so bad and I was always like last pick and um I always had like a sunny personality like actually Natasha called me on set Nancy Kerrigan <laughs> where's Nancy where's Nancy <laughs> um but uh, so when I came out to my family my mom was like a 60s civil rights person so she like obviously didn't care that I was gay but she was just confused because she was like, look, I have a lot of gay friends and I've literally never met a gay person who's feminine like you. I just, I'm just confused because like I've watched you grow up and you've always been terrible at sports. You've always, mm -hmm. like I've tried to get you to do stuff and you just won't do it. You just wanted to like play with your Barbies. And um, so I was really confused about like the gender stuff cause, and, and just this whole idea of femininity. And if you're really feminine, then you can't be queer. And what does that mean? And so another thing I really wanted to talk about in the film was um, I wanted the feminine part of Megan to not change when she became when she like owned her queerness. I didn't want her to like ride off on a motorcycle <laughs> at the end. <laughs> Like, I wanted her to still be a cheerleader at the end. She's still the same person. She's just also a queerdo. So I, like, in the whole construct of, like, masculinity and femininity, I also just found totally ridiculous that that had anything to do with queerness because it really doesn't, you know? Mm -hmm. right. um, so, yeah, so that was, uh, so I said to the production designer, I was like, look, when I go to Toys R Us and you see all these blue blue toys and all these pink toys, like, that's the stuff I want to talk about in the production design. So make it like the Barbie dream house, like very binary because it's so ridiculous, that whole thing. So let's just spoof it as much as everything else. Yeah, no, I love you. I love that you brought that up because that was always something that stuck with me. I always thought it was extra quirky of a movie because like the room's all teal. There's like nothing, on, you know, like, and I, I have, I want, I have in my notes, like, I wanted to ask you just honestly on a personal level, like, clearly it's intentional, but I'm curious as a viewer, like, what is the intention and what, you know, next time I watch it, hearing you, like, how can I make the, that room, like, really evolve more for my experience as a viewer? Well, I just started thinking about like, what does, what is Mary, the woman who runs True Directions, like, how is she going to make them straight? And I was like, if she feels like the girls are too masculine and then she makes them more feminine, maybe that will make them straight. So let's surround them with pink, let's surround them. And then I was like, to go even further with that, she is really scared of anything organic. So like when she's watering the flowers in the script, I made them fake flowers because she doesn't like anything that's real and organic, which is like our real sexual nature, our real gender you know, stuff. It's like, for her, it's all a construct and like, you just, you just make it what it is. So if it's a pretty flower, it's, it's plastic and you, you know, just polish it off, but she doesn't want anything that is like the way you're born basically. And then I was like, okay, for the beginning of the movie, um, before she goes into the true directions world, I should make everything as organic as possible. So like the costumes are cotton, and the, the walls when in her parents' house are like wood panel. And it's just like all like wood and brown and very natural. And then once she gets to the, the True Directions world, it's like plastic, fake. Let's just construct what we want to construct out of you. 
Very cool. And so, and then when they graduate, they're literally, I told the costume designer, make their costumes out of plastic. I love it. No, that's, that's cool insight. Just like as somebody who's watched it and back then and now, and just, you know, it's kind of cool. Next time I watch it, I'm going to, I'm totally going to look for those things. Um, yeah, it was fun. It was definitely fun to put together creatively. And um, in one of the fun things about the DVD extras for the 20 year or director's cut mm -hmm. um, is that I did a DVD extra with just the creative team. So it was me, the production designer and the costume designer talking about how we came up with all the ideas and other movies that influenced it. And then I also did a Zoom uh, with like 15 of the actors where we all talked about our memories of the movie and our favorite moments. And yeah, so it was a lot of fun putting together this release. And then they also included on it some of my early short films, um, cool. which are very Riot Girl inspired. Like one of them stars my brother and it's my best friend uh, is being harassed by my brother on the street. And so she pulls her tampon out and throws it at his face. Like, I'm like, I can't believe I made that. And my poor brother had to get hit by a tampon a million times. Uh, maybe it helped him in his masculine journey. <laughs> you know, maybe he had some fresh realizations every time it slapped him in the face. <laughs> Well, this has been awesome, Jamie. I, I really appreciate it. And thank you so much. Keep doing it. I feel like the, just now having like lived my life and getting a little bit older and, you know, having a platform myself, it's just, we don't realize the things we do are so impactful. So just thank you so much and uh, keep it up. It's just really inspiring. And my, and my lesbian soul is very, very pleased to meet you and thankful that you created this for, for a community out there who really needed it. So thanks so much, Jamie. Thank you. Thanks for appreciating it. I, that's literally why I make art. So very happy. Keep doing what you do. Very important. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye.